Hello, beautiful friends. We are back for another episode of the Robin Graham Show. I am thrilled you're here with me today, and I have another phenomenal guest. Chris Jones is joining me today to talk about writing compelling copy. Now, a lot of you may be saying to yourself, well, I don't know how to write. I can't write copy myself. Or you may be saying, well, I have to write copy because I can't afford to hire a professional copywriter. So there's a lot of things that go on in the mind when we think about writing. And sometimes even if we love to write, there is a significant challenge writing for our business. And we often get stuck in our own heads thinking, well, nobody cares about my story. My story isn't going to help anybody else. My story doesn't add value to anybody else's. But here's the thing, and we're going to dive deeper into this today, is that every experience you have had has led you to where you are today. And God has called you with a purpose on your heart to help certain people. So those people are just waiting to hear your story because that story is going to help them connect with you emotionally. You're going to resonate with them and they are going to understand that you are the bomb and you are meant to work with them and solve their problem. So we're going to dive deep into that today. And I hope that at the end of this, you're going to be able to sit down for five minutes and write your story. All right. With Without further ado, Chris Jones, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, I love what you're doing. I love storytelling. I love copywriting. I love all these like luscious nuggets of entrepreneurship that you're going to share with us today. So tell the listeners, please, a little bit about you and what brought you to the point in your journey that you're at today. Okay, so... um, My name is Chris. As you already know, I live in Portland, Oregon, and I run a boutique firm, marketing firm called Red Door Designs. Um, I've been in the industry now 20 years, so I've been at this a really, really long time, which is kind of crazy. And I really started my career out in on the design side of things. So I use design to tell stories visually and I love design. I love beautiful, clean, simple design. And as my business developed and I worked with more and more and more clients, um, I started to recognize the challenges that my clients were having around copywriting. And so they would hire me to develop a website for them and we'd pick a project start date. And I'd say, okay, your, your copy is due on this day. And they would say, okay, well, what, what should I write? And I'm like, you know, just write about yourself, you know, just, you can do it. You've got it. You've got two weeks. And then sure enough, that date would come and we'd have to move the date back and move the date back and move the date back because they were struggling so hard at trying to figure out what to say on their website. And so Eventually, I just decided, like, I'm not going to let my clients struggle anymore with this. Like, it can't be that hard. And and I was already doing a lot of writing, but I didn't really have a strategy that I could could teach my clients around how to do it. Um, And so what I did was I just made it my mission to kind of crack the code on how, how to write copy in a clean easy, simple way that truly connected with um, with their clients and really helped grow their business. And so in 2017, I uh, connected with Donald Miller, who is the author of Building a Story Brand. And I ended up flying out to Nashville and, and going through his certification process and really diving deeper into the fundamentals of storytelling. And it was mind blowing. Like I I was just soaking it in and loving every minute of it. And I came back and I started implementing this approach with my clients and all the websites that I was building. And it was, it was shocking what was happening with their businesses, like how effective it was once they, once they used real strategy behind the copy on their websites their businesses grew so quickly without a lot of effort because their website became their most powerful marketing tool. And so people would get on the phone with them ready to engage, ready to hire them because they were already sold by their website. Um, 
And so that's kind of how it all unfolded. And now essentially my takeaway from all of that was beautiful design means very little unless it's paired with very strategic copy that tells a good story. Mm-hmm. And so I do, I, I really, all the work I do is now focused on how to tell a story, how to, how to uh, create strategic copy for your website that works. And I think my, my unique special gift is around simplifying things. So they're just so clear and easy and not daunting because believe me, I've spent years of my life avoiding copywriting and dreading, you know, making it, it it feels like homework that you don't want to do. Right. It's just, Mm -hmm. but it's such an essential part of being your own brand. Um, and so I understand that struggle and I just, um, I don't want to go through it personally and I don't want anybody that I work with or anybody that I know, um, to have to deal with that kind of headache anymore. So that's why I've kind of created the work that I do now, which is helping people write copy for their websites in two and a half hours. I love that. So that a couple of things you said, and you said very clearly that the website became the biggest marketing tool. And I love that so much because I am a total geek when it comes to search engine optimization. But if you're not writing good copy, you cannot have good search engine optimization because of the use of keywords, key phrases, and the layout, the readability, and all those other little nuances that go along with it. Um, In addition to, you know, when you talk about having a beautiful website, you also want to have images, right? And I think you and I come both come from the background of visual artistry and and becoming more visible and telling your story visibly. And I think that when you have the written word in combination with beautiful imagery that also connects, you deepen that emotional connection so much further than just being on the surface and having something pretty. But I want to add to that, that for those people out there listening, and I've talked a little bit about this more so in my emails and my blogs than I have on the podcast, but I took a sabbatical from social media because I wanted to do a test. It was draining me and I wanted to do a test to see, okay, what happens if I go off of social media? What happens with my business? And because I've built a decent website, I'm not going to say great. I am sure it could use some improvement, but I'm pretty proud of it. But because I've worked with a designer and, and and done all of these things, my website is pretty resourceful, right? It it works for me versus working against me or not helping me. And so at the end of the day, when you have a tool like that, you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours and hours on social media trying to convert people to become your client there. So I, I just wanted to add that in. The website is indeed your should be your best friend in your business. Okay, so I kind of rambled a little bit, but let's talk a little bit about um, the process, I guess. And I know you have like a a, a five-minute kind of guide where people can learn how to write good copy in five minutes. Can we break that down for the listeners? Absolutely, yeah. So um, first off, I want to I wanna just start by saying you know, writing for yourself is really hard. And it's not just that it's, it's hard. It's like, it's legitimately, it can feel impossible. So I just want to let your listeners off the hook around the challenge of writing for yourself. Cause the reality is when you are trying to write for yourself, it's a lot like you're sitting inside of a bottle, trying to read the label of the bottle that can only be read from the outside. And this is why we need coaches. This is why we need to ask for support. And it doesn't have to be even paid support. You could ask your neighbor or someone who's an ideal client for you um, to give you feedback. But I just want you, you to remember that there's a reason why it's so hard. And the other thing that happens a lot is we're in our industry for a certain amount of time and we're so close to it that we've forgotten what it's like to not know what we know. I call this the curse of knowledge. And so we either talk over our our 
potential clients' heads, or we simplify it down to um, something that doesn't engage them. So there are kind of two things that, that I, those are the two struggles that I see the most. And what I, what I do around storytelling um, is really break down every story and the components of it in three different steps. So every story you've ever heard, every movie you've ever watched, every book you've ever read begins with a hero who has a problem that they don't know how to solve. And then a little bit later, that hero meets a guide who has a solution. And so that happens and guess what? You are the guide. You are not the hero of your own story. You are the guide and your customer or your clients are the hero. And then that guide gives them a plan and that plan guides them to experience success. So that is really, it's that simple. A hero has a problem they can't solve, number one. Number two, they meet a guide with a solution. And number three, that hero finds success um, because they've met the guide and the guide showed them the path to success. So the way we break this down around telling your story. And this is truly like, it's less about telling your story and it's more about inviting your potential clients into a narrative with you where they can envision themselves with you in the story and they play the hero character, you're the guide character and you're in this story narrative together. And that's the key to making copy compelling. Um, a lot of, a lot of people, <laughs> like I would say 99% of the websites on, uh, on the internet today, the company or the brand makes themselves the hero of the story that they're telling. And there's only room for one hero in every story. So you essentially kick your potential lead out of a story with you. They, they don't connect with you. Um, they don't want to keep reading because you're already the hero of the story. And so there's no, there's no way for them to really get pulled into the story with you. Um, so I think if you take nothing else away from today, it's really that you're the guide and your, your clients or your potential customers are the hero of your story. And the way we break this down is to always start your story with the problem that your customers have. So we always want to say, like when someone asks, what do you do? Um, you would answer the question, starting with the problem that your customers have. So if I were a parenting coach, I might say, you know, many, many toddler moms feel overwhelmed because there aren't enough hours in the day to get it all done. Now, notice I've just shared a problem that my ideal clients struggle with. Or if I were a retirement planner, I might say, you know, many people over 50 worry that their money won't last them through retirement. And notice how you're like, you're getting pulled in. You want to know like, okay, and, and is this <laughs> problem going to get solved? Tell me more. And um, I'll give you one more example. So for an eye surgeon, if I were an eye surgeon, I might say, after age 40, many people struggle with eyelids that inhibit their vision and make them look older than they are. And so the, these are ways that you can begin your story. Um, and those are some examples of how to start your story with a problem. So first you identify the people you're working with. So many people over 40 or many toddler moms, and then you follow it with the problem that they have. And then after that, we introduce the guide that has the solution, and that's you. So you might follow it with, um, let's get back to the toddler mom example here. So I'll, I'll repeat it, the, the problem. Many toddler moms feel overwhelmed because there aren't enough hours in the day to get it all done. I help them change their relationship with time. And notice, I have just stepped in as the guide right there with a plan, with a solution. I help them change their relationship with time. Or I'll give you an example again with the, with the um, retirement planner. 
my proven method takes the guesswork out of retirement planning. Notice like, I'm not telling you how I'm solving the problem. I'm just telling you that this is the problem that I solve. And you don't have to get into the detail of it. Um, for the eye surgeon, it might be, I'm a surgeon who specializes in eyelid restoration. So you know, like, oh, this is the guide is a surgeon who restores eyelids. Cool. Um, so tell me more, right? And then as the guide, one of our biggest jobs is to show show them what success looks like so they know what's possible for them. And so we end this story showing that the hero is experiencing really incredible success. And that example, again, I'll just continue with the parenting coach one. Um, I help them change their relationship with time. So that's the solution. So they can parent with more joy, peace, and connection. And for the retirement planner, my proven method takes the guesswork out of retirement planning so they can spend with confidence knowing they'll thrive. And then for the eyelid example, it might be, I'm a surgeon who specializes in eyelid restoration. So that's the solution. Uh, so you can look, so you can see clearly, look more youthful and feel your best. So notice like this is really a full and complete story. It's the shortest story you've ever heard, <laughs> but it contains all the components of what make stories compelling. You've got the hero with the problem, they meet a guide with the solution, and then they find success. And this can this approach and process can really work like an accordion. So right now our accordion is very shrunken down and condensed. That's why we're telling a very, very short story. But depending on what you're writing for, whether it's a blog or your website um, or really literally anything else for your business, you can expand this accordion out to be much wider. So you can uh, dive deeper into the, to the problem. You might want to add a few sentences after that that really describes the problem and goes deeper into it. You might want to go a little deeper into your solution and you might really want to paint a, a, a longer and more extensive picture of what success looks like. So no matter what, like it works for everything um, and you get to choose how short or long you want to make it depending on the environment that it lives Okay. I love this. And I've read Donald Miller's book. So the story brand book. So I'm familiar with all of these terms and it is kind of reverse psychology when you think of it this way, because we want to be the hero always, but what we really want to do is allow our soulmate clients to be the heroes of their own journey. And the more we can make them feel that way, the more we're going to build their confidence in what we're doing for them. So I, I do like and appreciate his model and how he, how he teaches. Um, and I will put listeners, I will put the link to his book in the show notes. So you can reference that and read that for yourself if you're interested. So my question for you is, we now know how to write this story that is going to help our audience understand how they can become the hero by us guiding them. Does this go on? My question to you is, does this mini version of the story go on the homepage and then we extrapolate it out on another page? Or how do you suggest we place this beautiful story? Yeah. So once you've got this, this story, um, it essentially what you want to do is repeat it as much as you can. So you want to put it in, in your social media profiles you want to put it in, in your email signature. You want to put maybe a shortened version, version on the back of your business card. You can put it on your LinkedIn banner. So you can pull from this. You can do the whole thing um, together or you can pull from it um, little bits here and there. Often what I'll do is I'll pull something out um, for the header of your website of this. So you've got all kind of all the nuggets in here that you need and Sometimes I'll put it all together on, on the website, or sometimes I'll pull something out for the, just that header area. Like, um, you know, we take the guesswork out of ret retirement planning so you can spend with confidence, you know, just 
by, a, by even a bite-sized version of that story. Um, just so when people land on your website, all they really care about is themselves. It's yeah. just how we're wired as humans. They want to know what you do and how it's going to benefit them. So this story really is, you know, hero centric because they're trying to figure out how you're going to make their lives better. And we want to make it very easy for them to understand that you're going to do that for them. Mm -hmm. So, Um, okay. So the story though, do we, do you recommend having the story like on the homepage and like obviously break out for headers and things like that components of the story and then on the service page as well? do you extrapolate out more of that story on the service page or what about the about page when you're telling about yourself, how Mm -hmm. do you incorporate the story into that without sounding so, Oh, I am so awesome. I do all this. Right. Right, 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 right. You use the same formula for different areas. So for example, I had a client that was giving three different, she she had three different offerings um, in, in her services section. Mm-hmm. And there were three different types of workshops. And so she went through this storytelling process for each of those and created each workshop had its own story or mini, mini story. Um, so you would do it specifically like if you if your workshop were sol- any workshop would be solving a specific problem. So you would just hone into that and, and regenerate the copy for each of those workshops. And then on the about page, um, you can do a similar approach. I mean, it really, on your website, you, the beautiful thing is you don't have to talk about yourself a lot. You, people want to know that you're qualified. They want to know that you've got authority. They, when you're the guide, you really do show up with empathy and authority. And it's a lot about helping them understand that you helping them know you understand the struggle that they're going through and that you can help them through that. So um, the about page is a little bit of a different process than this. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, it's different. It's a little bit more complicated than this, the one, two, three um, approach that I'm sharing here. So when you talk about cop writing copy for the, for the about page, Mm-hmm. How much do we tell about yourself? Yeah, because I, you know, you know, we said this in the intro that it is so hard for people to write about themselves and tell their story, and we don't want to write from when I was two years old, blah 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 blah. We don't want to tell right. our whole life story, but we need yeah. to pull out those integral parts that are going to connect with our audience and help them understand. Yeah, how we, we how we understand their problem. Right. I mean, that's really what they care about. So when you when you are writing your own story, it's really not all that much about you. Like if if you went to my website, you you wouldn't, you know, I don't go into a whole narrative of my history because people don't really care. They they number one, they're scanning the website, so they're not even fully reading um, a website. They're scanning it really quickly. And so I like to use really short bits of copy that don't allow, don't require people to like put out a lot of effort to read the copy. And so the, even the uh, copy about you is fundamentally about your hero and you really want to, it's not like you can't talk about yourself, but you really want to frame everything around the problem that your clients are having and how you can solve that. So um, even my about section is we get in a little bit more into the aspirational identity of what my customers want to be and why that, why that's hard and here, how my solution, I break down my solution a little bit deeper. Um, I do a one, two, three, steps here's how I here's how I solve this problem step one step two step three so it really is I mean it's really all about your hero and the main thing you want to communicate is that you understand you have compassion you know how hard it is and that 
you have authority in this field. So it's one of the most important sections on the website is highlighting your experience. And that might be 18 years in the industry, 350 clients, happy clients, um, or, you know, 18 certifications. You don't, <laughs> you don't need, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? You don't need. <laughs> right. Even one, but it, the more you, even that needs to be done strategically because if you start overly trying to impress, then you become the hero again. So mm -hmm. we really want to remind ourselves, nobody cares all that much about us. They just want to know, can we solve their problem? And are we qualified? Um, and do we, you know, do we understand them? Are we, do they feel a connection with us? And the way we create that connection is through storytelling. It's through talking about them. It's talking about their problem, talking about the, the, the way we articulate their problem and the more clearly we articulate the problem immediately, they be, they believe we're the best one to solve it. It's like a weird psychology thing, mm -hmm. um, that happens so much on a website happens instantly, especially with storytelling and especially with photography. So if you're pairing photography that tells the story and shows you working with a potential client and helping that, that part of that is showing you as the guide and the connection that you have with your clients. Mm -hmm. And so now they're, they're able to envision themselves in that narrative with you. That's the power of photography when it's paired with storytelling. It's like, it's like this superpower. And um, when it's done right, by the time they get to the bottom of your homepage, they're ready to book a call with you and when they want to work with you. And they're excited mm -hmm. about it, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Yeah. You're speaking my language when you talk about photography and copy. Um, okay. So Chris, this has been fabulous. I expect all of the listeners to start writing copy today. Um, <laughs> uh, take your five minutes and just write out your story guys, because I think there is so much power to this and you could even start by, you know, developing something for your homepage, but practice this using practice, using this for your email marketing strategies as well, because there's a lot of power to that. Um, and if you're on social media, use it for your social media posts too, because I think you'll connect with, with people more, um, openly and readily. Chris, how can the listeners learn more from you, connect with you, hang out with you? Yeah. If, if you are fed up with writing your own copy and you just want to do it, get it, get it done in two and a half hours flat, then I have an offer where that's what I do. We write your website copy and it takes two and a half hours and we're done and you check it off the list forever. If you're wanting to DIY things and dive deeper into the strategy of storytelling and learn the tools of how to do this in every time you're writing for your own business, then you can go to claritywithchris.com it's clarity with Chris with a K.com and you can sign up for my freebie there. Um, and otherwise go to reddoordesigns.com and you can get everything there and sign up for the 2.5 hour um, copywriting program. Awesome. You guys, I will put all of those links in the show notes so you can access them easily. I encourage you to visit the show notes because I'll have a recap of everything that Chris said and you will be able to take away more details than probably you were able to capture unless you were sitting there frantically taking notes. Um, so if anybody has any questions about that, anything we talked about today, feel free to email me at info at the robingraham.com. And if you know anyone who is struggling with writing their copy, direct them to Chris first, direct them to this episode, share it, <laughs> leave a rating and review if you found it helpful. And we will see you all next week.